to quote Nico, when I FaceTimed him, he said, are you gonna use my name again for clickbait? And the answer is? Absolutely, Absolutely, Nico. Absolutely. Nico. What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Show. My name is Michael. I'm leading the conversation today, and, yes. it's, and it's about the truth about Nico Leonard. Sure. Okay? Yep. I just spent what is basically a full week with Nico Leonard. One week in heaven, you wrote one, your diary. One week in heaven, I wrote my diary. Yeah. Um, at Watches and Wonders in Geneva. Yeah. Right? Uh, there were cameras. He was recording some of it. But this was basically behind-the-scenes hangout. Right? Mm -hmm. We talked about... The, the full gamut, we talked about family, we talked about money, we talked about uh, the watch business, we talked about the drama between him and a lot of people that I respect very much, which, again, I don't go in with my mind made up, I, I had an open mind, yep. but believe me, I was skeptical, sure. right? Because when there's smoke, there's fire, and if 10 people that I, or three, three people in this instance, that I know and respect or know and have a good feeling about, if they all say you're a piece of shit, my antennas are up that you're just a piece of shit and mm -hmm. they're all not lying. What are the odds that they're all lying? Right. What are the odds of that? You're right. So this is this is my experience, right? I met him on the first day of Watches and Wonders online to get in. Watches are unimportant to the time. They can't speed, slow, or stop it, and our phones tell it better. But as vessels for memories, they know few rivals. I'm walking into Watches and Wonders for the first day. Um, you know, there's this remarkable line. It took me two hours to get through the line. Nico would call it, I believe, the queue. Yes, the queue. Uh, and it took two hours to get through, and it was terrible. But I'm walking through. I'm trying to find the end of the line so I can get on it. And Nico, who was far shorter than I ever imagined. How tall is Nico? Oh, my God. 3'11". <laughs> so then it says something to the effect of, uh, uh, hey, you, you <laughs> you know, come yeah. online with me and insist that I cut this large line, which I, under normal circumstances, would never do. Cut a line. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> he insisted, um, so I did. Right. And and I, it's the first thing I said to myself when I was standing next to this guy. I said, oh, my God, this line's going to be an hour and a half. This conversation, how long could I possibly talk to this guy for? Yeah, I've right. never met him. He's far more popular than I am. And he's going to think that I'm here for clout. But he get, pulled me on the line. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I say it, There's a video. It's this exact thing you're talking about is Nico's video. Exactly. Yeah. So to my surprise, he was actually great on the line. On the line, he was tame and he was nice. And we he put me nice. in a video immediately. And yep. his uh, his videographer was this young dude, which is an incredibly cool dude. It was great. It was a great line. Uh, yep. I actually ended up getting booted off the line because I had different credentials towards the end. Whatever. Really? Higher or lower? Uh, different. Oh. Different. He had, he had press. I had buyer or something like that. Yeah. It's not one wasn't better or worse. So anyway, it was a positive interaction. I left saying, nice guy. Ah. Yeah. I hope I'm on his YouTube video. He recorded, so maybe we'll see, yeah. you know? Yeah. Whatever. Um, didn't necessarily think I'd run into him again. Of course. Um, now, later on in that day, I saw him walking. We interacted. He was actually talking to Ben Clymer at some point. Mr. Hodinkin. And he was telling, or, he, or, or I don't know if he was telling Ben, but when we spoke after, he told me, he's like, oh, I feel, I feel bad. I'm about to release a pretty rough video about the, about the unicorn Daytona. And yes. I said some pretty nasty words about Ben. And I was like, oh, geez, leave, you know, leave Ben alone. Yeah, yeah he's a good guy. Bandy, right? um, but, but, you know, I, you know, how I, you know, my, our of opinion course. on yes, the whole unicorn yes. thing. Um, so again, I still don't really know the guy too well. Then he tells me, come on, let's go outside. Let's have a smoke. Sure. Right. Now, I don't smoke cigarettes really very often. I smoke cigarettes very socially, sometimes over the summer with a, you know, a good drink. But you burn a few sticks. I burn a few. I, I throw some darts. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. But now is when he really starts to become funny because he's probably had a few drinks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, he doesn't even have cigarettes. He starts going to shake down, I believe, Chinese, uh, a Chinese group for cigarettes. Uh, I don't know how good their English was. I don't even know. But they got... 
the message that he wanted cigarettes, right? So he grabs one, I grab one, some other people uh, grab some, whatever. So we're all hanging out. And now he's starting to be loud. He's starting to be the character that you see on, right, on YouTube, you know? And people are coming up to him left and right, which is incredibly embarrassing because no one had recognized me. That's what my life is like whenever we go out to events. events. So it's all, (laughs) yes, yes, exactly. (laughs) So, and it was so nice of him because anytime someone came up to him, and I hated that he did this, but it was incredibly nice. he would say, this is Christian. He's the OG. Like, I actually loved his YouTube before I had one. Wow. And in the beginning, I was like, okay, stop saying that because it's it's a compliment, but it's it's obviously like and you disingenuous have and it sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah it right, sucks right. to hear, right? You did it. You've done it in quicker and you did it better. So, yeah, stop saying it. You're right. Then later on, when I think he felt more comfortable, he would say it and then follow up with a joke. Like... You know, this is Christian. He's the OG. Um, what do you have? Thirty-two thousand subscribers. <laughs> you know, and now I'm like, okay. Now I feel like now we're part. You know, now we're hanging out. Sure. You know. Yeah. Uh, so he had a great sense of humor. So then he goes to me. Uh, what do you say? We go for dinner tonight, right? I'm taking my whole team to dinner. You know, l- l- come to dinner. So you know, I said, okay. You know, this could be fun. This video is sponsored by Masterworks. Yeah, so obviously I just got back from Watches and Wonders and and there's no limit to the amount of money that you can spend, you know, in Geneva. It's it's, it's insane. But what everyone's really looking for on one degree or another is is value Mm -hmm. and, and of course, Right? A future investability, right? Yeah. A potential growth uh, in the watch industry right now. Honestly, you know, it's it's a little bit mysterious, sure, you know, because things were so crazy for quite a while, and now everyone's, you know, everyone's on their toes a little bit. Waiting to see what shifts. Because the watch industry is still fairly new, yes. so far as an investment category. Of course, it's new. It's young. So people are a little bit nervous. Now, art, on yes. the other hand, is neither of those things. Art actually, obviously, is very, very old. And investing in art has really been around since the dawn of art. Oh, yeah. But what has not been around is accessibility to that, unless you are the richest of the richest Exactly. Person. I've been at the auctions and watches and you know, all these Phillips and all the Christie's. And, and again, the watch industry has always been something where people spend money. But the real investors, the real buyers were in art. The great, the highest Sale in watches would be a seventh of the lowest sale in art. Right. You know, I mean, yeah. it would be crazy. The art guys were spending $55 million. Right. You know, the watch exactly. guys. It's, it's, yeah, they, they made the history world. spending a million. Exactly. Like right, exactly. Right. These are two very different things. And I love watches. Of course. But we all need to bow our heads and to understand that there are, there are greater categories. Exactly. Yeah. Obviously, this whole world has been almost impossible to penetrate for so long because of the high, you know, entry point, right? Of course, when you're yeah. talking about these major blue chip names, you know, Picasso, Banksy, all these different people, you know, you, you they're, they're, they're unaffordable for, for the vast majority. Of course. Do, yeah. do, Thousands of millions of dollars is not touchable, right? right? But but what Masterworks has done is through fractional ownership, completely democratize the entire world, right? So so we as you know fairly regular folks yeah. can actually buy small pieces, small fractions of a given art investment yep. and be along for the very you know what has been very profitable ride. Yeah, Masterworks so far has had 11 exits with every single one returning a profit to their investors. Masterworks has been in the game for a while, but even just last year, they paid $28 million in total net returns to investors. Unbelievable. There's over 650,000 members on Masterworks, and they have acquired more than $700 million in art. Jesus. I know. All of these investments are SEC qualified offerings. You can find Masterworks filings at sec.gov and links in the description slash show notes. And now their most recent painting sold in December for a 35% net return. Jeez. I know, it's insane. That's unbelievable. Truly. For the first five months of 2022, the average piece of art sold, it was, I think it was 26% higher at auction as opposed to private trading. So over 650,000 people have already signed up for Masterworks. So many people that there is actually a wait list, but you can skip the wait list by using our link in the description. Check out Masterworks, sign up and get invested in art.
So we go out for drinks and then to dinner. Uh, I wanted, I knew he was going to pay for dinner because he invited us out. Sure. So I went to go pick up the drink tab, which was a large group. Yeah. Uh, and he, uh, you know, he went to the waiter behind my back and he paid the drink tab. Very generous of him. Yes. Uh, but now things are really opening up, right? Now he's having a couple of cocktails. He's extremely loud, extremely dirty, obnoxious. Dirty? Uh, dirty, like uh, talking dirty. Oh, oh. You know <laughs> so he's mean? rolling in mud? He's rolling in mud. <laughs> uh, and, and he was incredibly obnoxious, but it, it was hysterical, right? Of course, yeah. Uh, if, if the restaurant was crowded, I would have felt bad. But mm. the restaurant was empty, so I didn't. Okay. You okay, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was a blast. We're leaving, and, and he reminded me of a friend of mine in this moment. He's like, come on, we're all going to go out to the club. And I was like, I really got to get back. You know, it's yeah. probably, you know, midnight or one in the morning. Sure. And I said, it's the first night. I got to get back. Let yeah. me let me go collect myself. And, uh, and you know, and he immediately goes, you know, yeah, f*** you, 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 you. You know, whatever. And then, you know, I was like, okay, I feel kind of bad now. I probably should have went yeah. because we would have been closer or maybe I could have gotten more clout. Sure. I find out the next day when I see him at the bar again, and he's like, no, I didn't end up going out. The rest of them went out. I went back to my hotel. And I was like, okay, so now we both chickened out. Yeah. Now, you know, yeah. all right, yeah, so sure. something coming. So now we're at the bar, again, incredibly loud. I had a blast. And I started to kind of probe now because now I, now I want to know about the drama. Right. Oh, tell me about sure. tell me about uh, tracks NYC. Tell me about uh, John Buckley. Tell me about uh, Jasper from Amsterdam Vintage Watches. Right. Mm -hmm. Nico is a very controversial figure that a lot of people. You know, he's he's in contact with a lot of people, and it's all shit talking. Right. Yeah. So now you know, buddy to buddy, I want to know like what's real, what's not. Yeah. Right. I mean, what's going on? What's the drama? So, you know, in short, he basically said that the tracks stuff, the tracks back and forth is real, but it's playful. I mean, it's they YouTube. know each other enough, but it is real. Like, he goes, my positions, all my positions, and his are his. Like, we are not making up arguments here, but we are... We're friendly, you know, we're friendly. So we know sometimes maybe we go a little bit too far and sometimes maybe we get a little bit of like, okay, could have pulled back a little bit, but it's pretty real. Then I said, well, what about John Buckley, right? John Buckley has been a watch dealer forever, right? He's a he's a friend of mine. I, John Buckley was one of the first people I knew in the industry. What's up there? You really attacked him, you know, or, or there was attacking going on. Sure. And he basically said, well, John, you know, kind of like butted his head in between the me and Trax beef. And I, you know, put him in his place. I respect John. He, he, he talked at length about how much he respects John as a watch dealer. Okay. But just kind of like, hey, now you're in my domain. If you're in the shit talk domain, you think that I'm in your domain? You think you're a shit talker? No, 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 no. Mm. I'm the guy and I'm going to spank you. And I'm going to spank you. Yeah. I, and I went into my phone and I even sent John a, a, a video of Nico and I hanging out. And it was clear those two guys. They were, actually yeah. don't like Oh, they actually don't like each other. Yeah. That is that is not playful at all. That is totally real, right? I think that John called Nico a walrus or a fat ass or whatever. On the text? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But on, in public, too. And then Nico called him back something. I don't even know. But it, it was it was bad blood, wow. you know? Wow. And then he, you know, was... Trying to explain, and then I then I pressured him on the on the Jasper Amsterdam vintage watches. This one I don't know anything beef. about. So so I neither did I, right? But Jasper posted this photo not that long ago, a couple of weeks ago, of himself, you know, and with this long text over it, talking about uh, a certain fake Irish, you know, watch dealer that's a piece of shit. And at this, he betrayed me. I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, you stole your okay, whole business sure. plan from me. Blah, blah, sure. blah. So here I am thinking, like, it sounds like Nico because he made fun of the fact that he's, like, fat and Irish. But, like, I don't get it. It really hit Nico with the with those cheap shots. Yeah, but I didn't yeah. get it. Like, I didn't get it. I said, what the f***? Do you even know Jasper? Like, what happened there? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, Jasper and I were, like, really good mates. Um, we had a beef with a deal. Uh, you know, I... I don't think I screwed him, but my actions ulti ultimately ended up against his best interest. And uh, I think that we both did what we had to do and whatever. So I was like, so are you guys good? And he literally went into his phone and FaceTimed Jasper right there. Because keep in mind, I'm trying to figure out, like, is this guy a piece of shit? or not. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah, need course. to be in bed hanging out and drinking with the guy that everyone else hates and now I'm associated with the guy that everyone else hates. Right. I don't need that. Right. You know, even for clout, no good. Right. And Jasper didn't pick up, but he did text back, like, I'm, I'm busy, what's going on? And they were being nice, totally nice and cordial over text. Interesting. And I said, okay, well, it seems like the beef is resolved, I suppose, sure. you know? Yeah. Um, and then I saw him one more night out at a club and we stayed out pretty late. 
um, actually with um, with Jean Claude Beaver's son, Pierre Beaver, wow. uh, who was wearing these John Lennon glasses. It was hysterical because uh, because he, like John Lennon, wants to look like John Lennon. Let's look like this hippie. Yeah, of and course. And yet, you know, John his, Lennon his was wearing a twenty four ninety nine. Exactly. You know? yeah. um, so so that it was it was fun. It was it was it was a fun night. Um, again, incredibly generous guy. He definitely is obnoxious. Mm. If you are quiet and you are reserved, do not be in. Do not go into public with Nico. It's incredibly obnoxious. Yeah. I happen to find that funny. Right. Right. And next to him, I look like a church mouse. Wow. I look like the quietest guy in the world, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, but but I got to say, um, I would, I'm would. i clearly using his name now for clout, clearly. But the truth is that he is nice and generous. He seems very honest. And he was a gentleman to me. He was, he was a gentleman. Uh, so that's it. I mean, God bless his success on YouTube. Uh, he's had far more than me. Uh, you know, he's got a, a terrific business that apparently does very well. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and God bless him. His team was lovely. The folks on his team were so nice. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh my God, so nice. You know, they were far more palatable than he is. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's borderline unpalatable for a lot of people. Wow. Um, but, but they were like the sweetest people in the world. Wow. Oh yeah, they were so nice. Wow. So so yeah, that's that's the truth about Nico Leonard. That's the truth. Good guy. That he's a he's a good guy, albeit remarkably obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. You know, just like he's on YouTube. Yeah. Right? Just like he's on YouTube. And that's it. Wow.